Russian cuisine is sharply divided between traditional, simple peasant dishes and the food that the aristocracy enjoyed by bringing in chefs from the rest of Europe. A fish mousse such as this one has its roots in Russian peasant holiday food, but I have elevated it here to a dish that could have been served at an 18th or 19th century nobleman's table with the use of ingredients that would have been incredibly exotic and costly in Russia at that time. There, the first step is to get the fennel cut up and uh, cooked. So if you've got any tough outer leaves, and sometimes you do. This one's actually not too bad. This is unusual. This is actually pretty clean overall, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and chop it into a hot pan. <clears throat> I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. I'm actually using an olive oil from Crete, Greek island, and uh, it's uh, very spicy and peppery, but this is a, a refinement you don't really have to worry about. And I'm putting the, the fennel in. It's uh, 200 grams. I, I weighed it. And just a little sprinkle of sugar to help it caramelize. This is what it looks like after 12 minutes. I have it on a medium heat, 5 out of 1 to 10. It's important not to rush this. We're not looking to burn the outside and have the inside raw. We want the whole thing tender. And this is, uh, unfortunately, this is one of the biggest parts of the work in this recipe. You have to get the fennel nice and tender and golden first. So just keep cooking it on medium heat. Be patient. Okay, it's coming up on 30 minutes now. Now I'm going to add that shallot finally. And about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to give it just a little bit more. We want the shallot to be much less cooked than the fennel. And if we put the salt in earlier, it'll draw out moisture from the fennel and it'll never brown well. That's why you don't put the salt in until closer to the end. Okay, it's been three more minutes now. And I'm going to add the white wine. And I'm just going to cook this to evaporate it down to where it's almost dry. It's just like another minute. And then I'll transfer it to a, a bowl, put it in the refrigerator, and start it cooling. But uh, first we're going to cook it just a little bit, get rid of all the alcohol and extra moisture. And I'm going to first go through this cod with uh, a knife to make sure that there's no bones, even though this is pretty carefully filleted. You never know. You gotta, you gotta really check it. So once it, once it goes through the food processor, the bones will be ground into little bits, and you'll never get them out unless you pass it through a sieve, and that's really a lot of work. So let's try to avoid that and make damn sure there's no bones first. Okay, this looks pretty good. I think I did a good job filleting it. Okay, to the uh, food processor stick blender cup, I've got 200 grams of cod scraps. I've got this. <clears throat> vegetables that we cooked, the uh, shallot and the fennel. I've got um, two egg yolks, and egg, uh, egg whites rather. I measured these, it's actually 70 grams. And I've got 70 grams of egg whites. I've got about a tablespoon each of dill and parsley, fresh dill and parsley. I'm going to put in this. A little bit of fresh white pepper. And just a dab of Dijon mustard, uh, about a teaspoon. And uh, now we're going to process this. After you've got it started a little bit, now you can add the cream in. So now we're going to go back to pureeing it a little bit more. Safe thing to do to achieve perfection. Mix up a little bit of this fish puree with some uh, fresh chives, so you know how much chives to add. And then also add a little bit more salt, and, and keep in mind you'll need to adjust the salt, because uh, different fish, different <laughs> different things end up being slightly different amounts of salt. Then just tie it in uh, a bag, tie it up with some string, and, and steam this by itself first as a trial run. Then you can see there's a steamer, we'll give it. Well, because this is a smaller quantity, this will probably be like seven minutes, something like that, <coughs> just, to, just to test it. Then after it steams, let it cool off for a minute, get the plastic off it, you've got a piece that you can taste, and you can adjust the chives and the uh, salt from there. 
to take zucchini, put it on a flat surface, run it through a mandolin. I've got this set to 1.2 millimeters thickness. You're going to need a couple of pieces, nice long pieces. Okay, <clears throat> get clean film. You push it down into the hole. You get your first piece of zucchini. You're going to coil it to give it a head start here. Make sure you coil it a little bit smaller so it can fit down inside. And then after it's down there, you're going to work it to expand it against the sides. Like this. Reposition this so you can see. Then I've got the second piece of zucchini, and I am going to uh, position this the same way. You put it in a circle. So we've got a double layer here. You just have to work it a little bit to expand it to the right size. Make sure that it's snug though. Okay. Now we've got the cod mousse from earlier. And I put into here. You don't want to pile it to the top. <laughs> you leave yourself some room. Plus, this is going to expand a little bit as it cooks. Okay. So the exact amount is going to take a little bit of practice. A little bit more than this, though. And we work a little bit, smooth it down. Hard to do with a camera in the way of my elbow. But, uh, you get the idea. You leave yourself a little bit of room here because it's going to expand and you want room in there. Then you fold this ends up and seal it reasonably well. Flip it up, turn it upside down. Now this is the packet that's going to go into the, uh, the steamer. Then when the time is up, you're going to take it out of the steamer basket, move it over to a plate, shape it up a little bit, and then let it cool off. And flip it up. Open up this plastic. Just to show you what it looks like from the side right now as it's just cooling. Making the coating mixture. Use a tablespoon of rice flour. Really try not to use regular flour for this if you can possibly avoid it. It'll be much better. Uh, let's get turmeric. Parsley. Dried parsley. And salt. Yeah, mix this together. The best tool for this breading operation. It's the same spider you usually use for um, getting things in and out of a fryer. So, I'll put a few of them in this first. First in the flour. Then in the egg. Back in here. So you want a good coating on them. And use this to get them out of the coating as well and transfer them to the deep fryer. That way you know that you've shaken off all the extra flour. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology. 
available through Amazon online.